Can you hear me? So hi everyone, um, shall we start? Uh, so um, how did the assignment go? The program assignment? You have a question here. You have to build it up. You have to. For, for the state of Pac-Man, for example, for Pac-Man or Yeah, so how do we make, uh, the question is, how do we make an evaluation function for Pac-Man? Uh, if we have an example, any ideas from everyone else here? I just did my just now. Yeah. Uh, I basically have it try to run away from the ghost if it's within three, like Manhattan distance three of the of Pac-Man. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then otherwise it looks for food. Goes yeah, for, goes yeah. For food. yeah, 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 yeah. So so yeah so so you're trying to avoid dangers if the if the if ghost is too close by then yeah uh, Manhattan distance between you and the ghost is uh, less than a threshold as the colleague said you can look for uh, food items you can uh, sort of um, try taking different paths that you think could uh, 
leave you some more food. Uh, there are all kinds of things you can do, all kinds of things. You can, you can use all the different distance measures like Manhattan distance or uh, something else. Um, yeah. Um, any, anyone else uh, did uh, something different? You haven't started yet. Okay, yeah. <laughs> And how much food there is, yes, yes. So sort of, yeah, yeah, like, um, uh-huh, uh-huh. Like density of food in a particular region, yeah, yeah. Um, these are good ideas, yeah. So so that these are some ideas of what you can do to implement the evaluation function. You can do all kinds of other heuristics, as we discussed. You can sort of assume you can go through walls. You can assume that the, the board wraps around. You can, uh, th those will be valid the heuristics also. Um, Yeah, um, it, it has to be positive and it has to be below the true cost. Yeah. Anyone else, what, what, what were the impressions about the program assignment one so far? Was it, was it easy? No, it wasn't, it was, it was okay, it was okay. Yeah, um, no, it wasn't, it, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, well, what was hard about it? Uh-huh, uh-huh, right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, it's just understand the, the problem setting and how the, yeah, what you have to do, how a structure, how each module. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, great. So um, I had a few announcements for today's class. So first of all, so we have an in-person quiz as a reminder on Wednesday. Um, and um, and this will be a quiz that would be, so, so don't be too worried about it, but it is important. It will count towards your final grade, this quiz. So I think it's around 25%, if I'm not mistaken, of the, of the overall mark will be based on these quizzes. Um, um, it'll be 40 minutes in the class in the second half of the lecture. Um, and we'll do it here. Um, we'll do it printed. So we'll print them out. We'll hand them over to you so you can, you can do it on pen and paper. Um, you can use open book. You can use any materials, any slides you, you have, any notes. Um, yeah, it's, but you, you might have to go through them again quickly. You, you, yeah, sort of, you'll have like four or five problems and you go through them. Some will be multiple choice. Some will be sort of like the right answers, right all answers. Um, some will go through some kind of steps of some algorithms. Um, so, so everything is covered in modules one and two. So uh, for this quiz, so th this includes the search problems on graphs, A star, uh, all, all, all of those. Um, and also the constraint of satisfiability problems. Uh, what Professor Gilpin uh, taught uh, in the two lectures. So, um, so that, that's the material that is covered this time. So of course, for, we'll have more quizzes. We'll have two more quizzes later on in the course, and then we'll cover adversarial search in the, in the next quizzes. So, and, and the rest questions, yeah. Modules one, so uh, modules one and two includes everything up until and including Professor Gilpin's lectures. So everything up until and including that. So, so we started adversarial search, uh, that's module three, M3. So, uh, and I, I put on the slide, so this is M4, for example, we're already in module four. So use this, this sign, M, M1 and M2, those are the lectures that will be modules one and two. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, that, that, that doesn't mean to say, so we won't cover these. Well, in the next quiz, yeah, we'll cover also modules three and four. So we'll have another quiz later on, on those. Um, any other questions? Okay, um, we, I wanted to send a reminder to everyone. We have a late day policy. We got some, I got some questions over email about the late days for assignments. So we have a late day policy. You can do a maximum two late days per assignment. I think I made a mistake in one email and I said the four by mistake. 
so so yes, it is two late days per assignment, and in total of uh, have seven late days through, uh, throughout the whole course. So kind of uh, use them, yeah, as you see fit. We won't grant any additional extensions apart from these two late days that you can use as you as you need. Um, um, yeah. Um, so the, the two deadlines coming up. So we have worksheet three that is due. I think it's due on Wednesday. So double check on Canvas. And project P2 is also due, I think, in two weeks. Again, check on Canvas. Um, all the all the dates, everything is on Canvas and they set there. If you have any questions, so do yeah. yeah. For the programming assignments yeah. for the project. Yeah. Oh, you mean project? I need to double check with all that with the graders um, and the T, uh, yeah and the TAs. I think uh, I think I would I would think I would think it's it's the highest. I would think it's the highest. But let, um, let me double check with them because um, they'll be they'll be grading there. Um, yeah, yeah, um, yes. Yeah, again, I ask ask the greatest and the TAs and the for that because they they're in charge with the program assignments. Um, I think it's oh, it's definitely on Solza poll on the server, but I um, I don't know if you have to submit something else like like a report or your code somewhere, upload it somewhere else, like on Canvas. Double check with them. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Any anything else? Um, yeah, so, uh, so the, the other thing I want to say, so for, for the quizzes, uh, I recommend, I do really recommend like, kind of like, again, you, you, you've done the worksheets, but make sure you do the, this one as well, which is also due, uh, soon. So in, by Wednesday, the quizzes are kind of similar to the worksheets, roughly the kind of questions that are for the quiz. So that kind of style of questions. So, um, yeah, go to them again, make sure you, you, you clarified everything on the, on the worksheets and. Yeah, and it should be good with the quizzes. Um, okay. Um, if there's no other questions, so we'll move on. So we left last time. So we spoke about, um, last time, if you remember, we spoke about all these rational preferences about utilities. Uh, we, we were talking about, we were going to this maths. Um, we'll see very shortly how, uh, to today, how we're gonna apply those ideas. Let me, I need to change this, yeah. Um, so we, so we, we set up basically um, the setting for reinforcement learning. If you remember, we were saying how, actually I'll go back one slide. We have an agent, we have an environment and the, and the agent takes actions in this environment. And uh, we give some examples and then we, we introduce the, the, our grid world. This will be like a, a basic environment we're going to use uh, throughout the uh, reinforcement learning lectures. So, so we have an agent, a simple robot that lives in this grid world, which is a three by four. It starts here at one one. It needs to end uh, to reach the goal state. There's another negative goal state which is really trying to avoid. So, it's trying to avoid this minus one state. It's trying to get to the plus one state. Um, it can take four actions. It can go north, south, east, west. Uh, there's uh, small living rewards uh, for each step, which can be negative also. So it can be losing points if it, if it takes a path that is too long to reach the goal state, if it keeps going in loops like that without finally reaching it. Um, and, the, and the goal is to maximize the sum of rewards. So um, we also have stochasticity in the, in the actions. Uh, our environment is not deterministic. So basically, even though it tries to go north, sometimes, uh, it can go west or east. So 10% of the time, uh, it can, it can uh, in, instead of going north, it actually goes west. 10% of the time, it can go east. So, so we have uncertainty. This is the, the, the key word is uncertainty. We don't know for sure that it's actually going to end up north, even though it tries to go north from, from the state. Um, it, it cannot go, it, it doesn't wrap around. It, if it bumps through a wall, for example, if it, if it actually tries to go this way, it's going to start, end up staying in the same state, even though, it, because there's a wall there. 
So these are the rules basically. Um, and we, we, we saw how we can represent it again as a, as a tree. Again, we have a, um, the, the different states on the, in the nodes and then we can take actions and then we expand the tree to, uh, to more and more uh, states. Um, and then we, we, um, we defined um, what are the set of states S uh, in uh, a set of actions. And we define what is a transition function T that so a transition function T is basically a function that tells us um, that if we are in state S and take action A, we're going to end up in a new state S prime. This is what this, this function tells us. And we, we say, with what probability are we going to end up in state S prime, given that we started in state S and took action A? This is uh, it's, it's a sort of probability function, this, this, uh, this T. We also have a reward function R, which is telling us what is the reward uh, that we start in state S, take action A, and then we end up in state S prime. What's the reward that we get uh, upon landing state S prime from these, these states? We have a start state and we have a terminal state also. Um, so these are the definitions that, that we're going to use. Um, is it all clear? Just definition so far. And, and we saw the, we, we, and we stopped here. I remember last time. So we, we described the interaction, the, the loop of the robot. So the, the, the robot starting state S is zero and starting state S zero takes an action and then ends up transitioning to a new state S prime according to the transition function and then uh, receives a reward in that new state S prime, and then ends up to repeating the same thing. Takes a new action, A1 now, transitions to a new state S double prime, according to uh, this, uh, the, the transition fun uh, function again, T, and then it receives a new reward R uh, in, in this new state S double prime. Yeah, it keeps the going, doing this in a loop. So, um, you know, we, we call these uh, Markov decision process, but what, what does the Markov keyword mean in this? So, in this, uh, so let, let's, let's, let's see what, what, what do we mean by a Markov, yeah, Markov process. So, so, so this was Andrei Markov who was uh, the person who introduced uh, this concept and he was a Russian mathematician. And, um, and generally, uh, the Markov for something, a Markov process, a Markov um, state, and uh, all, all this stuff basically means that the past is independent from the present. Basically, basically, we don't take into account the past. We only care about the present. So um, this is what, in general, what Markov means. So basically, if we have a um, Mathematically, if we have uh, the probability of us landing in state, you know, uh, S, S prime at, at the next step, given that currently in the present we're state ST and take action ST, and, and we have been previously in the state ST minus one and, and, and so on up until S zero, this is only, this only depends on the current state ST and the current action. So mathematically, what this means is that we don't care about the previous states where the robots have been for this. So, so, so this, this is what the Markov property means. It means the past is independent uh, given the present. It only, the, only the present matters. It's, it's a very important, it's a very important um, assumption because it, it makes these, uh, the inference tractable in, in a Markov decision processes. Otherwise, if we had to take into account all these past states, the, the probabilistic inference would have become completely intractable. Sometimes, for example, some people can, um, in some other research areas, people look at two, like level two Markov uh, states, for example, and you can take the, 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 into account the, the present state ST and maybe one more from ST minus one. And that's like a level two Markov process or level three and so on. But if you take too many of them into account from the past, then it becomes, exponential in the number uh, exponentially intractable in the number of states um yeah um so 
we also often use this shorthand notation. So, it, but this is the same thing as 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 before. So, so notice how I was explaining last time about here. Capital letters mean random variables. Small letters mean the actual values that the random variables take. So we can also write it like this without putting um, uh, the random variables into account, just the values. Um, okay, so um, so so we're going to use this property, the Markov property, in in solving uh, yeah uh, these Markov decision processes, um, and. Um, and more precisely, uh, what we want in MDPs is that we want to find an optimal plan, which we'll also call a policy. The policy basically takes us, it, it, what it tells us is that given, given our grid, it tells us what are, what are the optimal actions to take in each square. Based, based, so basically for, for this particular state here, the optimal action is to go north. And, and and follow this path and then keep, and then this state again to go north and this one go go east and so on up until we reach the the goal state. So it it tells us a, a, a policy is basically a set of uh, path, uh, directions at each step that we can take towards the goal. So so we're trying to learn this policy, trying to find out where. It, have have any of you seen uh, policies or reinforcement learning? Nobody. Okay, we'll we'll. This is perfect. So, so we're going through these, and uh, we'll even do a quiz uh, very shortly. So, so we'll, we'll test some of these a quiz a class exercise. I mean, uh, to test some of these, um, some of these. So, um, so for example, um, so the optimal policy here, uh, when when the reward at each step is uh, minus zero point zero three. Um, is given by this. So what do we mean that if we have a reward, uh, if we lose zero zero three points at each step, then this gives us this optimal policy. Um, so, um, so, so look how, for example, um, this, this will be the uh, policy when we have a reward of minus 0 0.01. And this is when we have a reward of minus 0 0.03. So look how the reward function that we use can change the optimal policy that we get. Notice it's almost the same, but there's some differences. Uh, where, do you, where do you see some differences here? Anybody? Yeah. From left to up, this one, no? Yeah. And also this one here. Yeah. Um, wh why do you think that's the case? Why do you think it changes like that? Yeah, so they're going away from this, yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. What, 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 yeah, so more, 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 uh, more precisely, why, why do you think that? Somebody else? Yeah. Why is it increasing the chance to go right? That's not the reason. Yeah, I, I know, I know, but yeah, it happen, It just happens to be clockwise, but it's not the actual reason why. It, yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yes, yes. So the reason why? So I'll repeat that. So the reason why is because um, remember we have a we have a small probability of deviating instead instead of so for example for. Um, for this policy, even though we say to go north, there's a 0.1% chance of actually going here instead. So actually, actually I ended up in a bad state with a, with a reward of minus one, like a really bad state. So, so, so this, this policy is okay to take the risk of ending in this state with a zero, with a 10% chance to take that risk, but this policy is not willing to take the risk. And yeah, yeah. No, this one. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yes, B because um, yes, yes, 
exactly. And the reason why that's the case is because this cost is very small than this one. The, the, the cost of doing these actions is actually quite small. It's 0 0.01. So, so it, it doesn't lose too much by, by trying to stay away as much as possible from this one and try not to reach the goal state. Um, so, so that's the reason why this, this happens like this. Um, and, and if you increase it, so for example, the reward to, I don't know, so decrease it even further to minus zero four and zero, minus two. So look what happens now. So, so for minus zero four, we have these, we have these different behaviors. If you're here, you actually want to go this way. Like you, 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 you don't care about the over here you were trying to avoid you see when you're here you're trying to uh, not take this short path and to try to go around basically to make sure you stay as far away as possible from the negative goal state in as you decrease the rewards more and more basically you're trying to reach the reward state as as soon as possible because otherwise at each step you keep incurring more more losses basically at each step each step you make you lose two points so you don't care too much. Even if you're here, you're trying uh, or here, you're trying to get to here as quickly as possible. Because if you don't get there, you lose two points at every step. Um, so, so I think the what is it trying to show is that the reward function can change the policy, the the actual policy that the robot will take. Um, so in the case uh, in the case of your Pac-Man agents, the same thing is it depends you know how much reward you get you give the Pac-Man for finding a food item, how much reward you give it to for being close to a food item. Even you can even do that, and and that will change the the policy, the, the actual actions, the movements it will take. Let, let, let's look at another example. So let's look at um, this game of. A uh, card called high and low. It's a very simple game, mostly to 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 show you um, some concepts. So, so we have three cards, two, three, and four, and we have an infinite deck, and we have twice as many twos as the other ones. And you start with the showing a, a card of three. After each card, so after each card, there's two actions you can take. You can take a, you can say high or low, and basically, um, and then, and then you flip a new card, and if you and if you are right, as in the the card you, for, for example, if you, if you have with the, you start with a three, if, if the new card is higher than three, like a four, for example, or, or three, then you're fine and you win points. Um, and if you're wrong, the game ends basically. So, so if, if the new card was lower than three, although you said high, then you, you stop the game basically. And again, the game uh, is trying to, you have to maximize as many points as possible. So you're trying to play as long as possible and keep winning these points. And the point at each step you win is the is whichever card. How, how many you know? If if you draw a two or a three, then you get two points or three points. So how many? Yeah. So, um, so how is it different from before? So so we get rewards as we go. And um, and we might play forever. So the game, uh, yeah. In general, the, the the game ends only when we make a mistake. So. Um, so let's see how we write it in, in terms of our like you know state actions and, and transition functions. So the states are two, three, and four, and also done. That's another that's another state, the end state. We can take two actions. We can either say high or low, and then we can build our transition prob uh, function. So this is again telling us what's the probability of going from state S, taking action A, uh, and ending up in state S prime. What's the probability of ending in state S prime? So we can build them up. So for the probability of ending in state two, given that we had the card of four and we said low, it's a half because we have twice as many twos in the in the deck. That's why uh, the probability of of uh, drawing a three ending up in state three, given you started with a card of four and you said low, is a fourth, and and same for uh, s equals four and low. Yeah, um, so so basically, and, and the same thing we do with the on the other side. So again, if we have a four and highs, again we we write out the, these probabilities with these transitions. So the probability of um, ending up in the state two, given you had the four and you said high is zero because you end the game because if you you know because two is 
lower than four, and um, yeah, and then you would you would you'd be wrong, then the game ends. So so anyway, the, the key idea is that this is how you write the transition function. You, you write like this for the game. Um, you define the rewards, which are the, the number that is shown on the card that you draw. That that's the reward function. Um, and the, and the start state. So this is how the the tree looks like. So we start with a card of three. We say either low or high. Uh, this is a, this is a, a state of three, and then we chose low, and then we keep expanding further. So then we do uh, with a, with different probabilities, we end up in each of these four new states. So so then uh, getting a two has the probability of a half again because it's twice as many. Getting a three has a probability of a quarter. Getting a four has a probability of zero because you, the game ends actually because you you guess wrong and then the game ends. So if, so you will never get you have a probability of zero because you never actually get a four. You will end up ending the game. And these are the rewards that you get at each step. The number the number shown on the card. So you get a reward of two or four, and this should be three actually. There's a mistake here. It shouldn't be zero rewards here. Yeah, but any questions? So this is how you formalize the, the game. You you write uh, write out the, the transition probabilities. This is the, the tree that you built and, uh, and you can rezone it. Um, and you keep expanding further. Again, if we take, for each of these states, you can take a high or low actions and so on. Um, there's another key concept that we have to cover here, and that's the, the concept of what's called a Q state. A Q state is basically um, a, a node, um, a node in our tree that has not just a state value but also an action on it. So basically, a pair of a state and an action. So in that case, if we draw a card of two and then we take an action saying high, so two and high or two and low, these are these are Q states, pairs of a state and action. Um, They'll be important um, when we study the Bellman uh, algorithm shortly because we can do inference much more efficiently on these Q states instead of the simple states. So that's, that's why we, yeah, uh, it's important to think about that. And then, so, so we'll uh, denote them as a tuple, S and A, this will be a Q state, and this S, A, and S prime will be called a transition. So what, we've seen this before. Um, this is again, st starting state S, taking action A, and ending in state S prime. Yes, so um, so in order to formalize the notion of optimality of of a policy, we need to understand uh, the utilities of sequences of rewards. So more precisely, so imagine our robot um, takes a sequence of rewards, R, R0, R1, R2, and so on, and these are preferred to these other sequences. And we've seen this last time in the last course. This This symbol means that we somehow prefer this set of rewards versus these other ones. And, and there's a property called stationarity, um, um, and which basically tells us that if we these are stationary, if we can basically, if we have a common reward in these two sequences, this R is common, we can take it out. And, and this will still hold. Uh, taking out the, that reward, we, we will still prefer this subset compared to this other subset. Um, this is an important property because this property allows us to implement two types of utilities. One of them is an additive utility, and the other one is a discounted utility, if we have this property, this functionality property. So, so basically, we can say that the utility of an entire sequence of rewards, R0, R1, R2, will be simply adding them up. But we can also do something called discounted utility, where basically, um, the, the, the total utility of all the rewards will be R0 plus gamma R1 plus gamma 2 R2. So basically what happens here is that we discount future rewards with a discount factor gamma. So, so uh, this will be reward, the reward right now in the present state. This will be rewarded next step, which is discounted by a factor of gamma, let's say 0 0.9. It's, it's always below one between zero and one. So this gamma. So and then the second step in the future, we discounted by gamma squared and then so on gamma cubed. So we have um, 
a geometric sequence of discount factors with which we discount these rewards. Um, yeah. Um, so the reason why it's important to, you might be wondering why it's important to do this discounted utility. Why are we uh, complicating our lives? Um, the reason why is because uh, sometimes in these uh, mark of decision processes or in the reinforcement learning, we deal with infinite utilities. Sometimes if, if the game keeps on playing um, forever, for example, we'll basically end up accumulating any, uh, re rewards all the time and that could go all the way to infinity. So that's, that's a problem. And um, so we don't we, we we don't want an infinite um, yeah infinite reward because then we cannot we will we'll see later on we have there will cause some issues when we compute what we call values for the states. So so to basically to make these rewards finite these sequences finite, um, we have several options. We either use a finite horizon, which means we only look ahead a certain number of steps into the into the future and we terminate after let's say t steps. Kind of like we were thinking about the, the gra those graph search methods, how we sort of like, you know, in, in min max, we were looking only at a depth of 50 and we are stopping there. Um, sort of the same here. Um, we can also give, uh, sorry, we can also give non stationary policies. So basically, that means that the policy pi depends on the time left. Somehow we have some kind of time that kind of keeps, we stop the game after a certain. No, a certain time. Um, we can also have other options. For example, we can have an absorbing state. That for, so we basically for every policy, we can um, ensure that there's a terminal state that exists and will be reached eventually. That's another option. Um, and of course, we can also do this discounting. So basically, we can basically use this, this discounting factor we showed earlier, where basically, if if we do the discounting of utilities, then that the, the the total utility of all this this uh, all these rewards are zero r one up to r infinity will be uh, a sum from t equals zero to infinity of gamma to the power of t times r t. So this uh, this is the formula for the discounted utilities, and this will be smaller than or equal to uh, this equation, r max over one minus gamma. And the reason why is because we take the R max is basically the highest rewards out of all these RTs. You take the, the highest, the maximum one, and 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 this 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 uh, this sum will be smaller than or equal to R max times uh, these discounting factors gamma to the power of t. And then we know that that that, that uh, geometric sequence um, conver uh, converges to to one uh, to one over one minus gamma. Have you have you seen that result? Are you familiar with? This result of geometric sequences increasing. Is anybody familiar? Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Um, have you seen uh, this result that if you let's see. If you have a sequence of so one plus gamma plus Gamma squared plus gamma to the power of three plus and so on. Have you seen this and and how how this converges to one over one minus gamma? I think. So this is this is the this is the geometric sequence. Um, Okay, I see some confused faces. Uh, would you like me to explain that a bit more or shall I go ahead with the slides? Which one? Explain that or, or go ahead. Explain, explain that. Um, so so the, this, is, this is called a geometric se uh, series and, um, and basically, you kind of solve it like this. You basically take, you, you start at, at a particular n value, uh, value of n, for example. And then what you do, so th this is called like S. Then you 
you take this expression and you multiply so you pre multi multiply by gamma. So then you do gamma, get gamma s equals gamma plus gamma squared plus gamma cubed plus so on plus gamma to the power of m plus one. And then you subtract this from that. Yeah. So so if I do gamma gamma s minus s, so this minus this one will be equal to all of these minus all of these. So yeah, and you see how this one, they cancel out. This one cancels out with this one, this one with this one, and this one cancels out. So you get equals, you get this one, gamma n plus one minus one. Yeah. And then you simply find out, yes, this is also equal to s times gamma minus one this thing here. And then this says that S will be equal to gamma N plus one minus one over gamma minus one. So that's how you get it. And now if you take the limit, uh, so this is a little, we call this SN, all of these are N because this is uh, dependent on this equation. And then if you take the limit when N tends to infinity of SN, and this equals to after a few steps, it will be equal to one over one minus gamma. But we can let me see if I can do it off the top of my head. So that's uh, Yeah, so this one, uh, since gamma is uh, less than one, this uh, this factor becomes zero because when it's raised to the power of infinity, gamma will basically become zero. So this will become, this will be a limit when n tends to infinity of gamma n plus one minus one over gamma minus one, which tends to, zero minus one over gamma minus one, which is equal one over one minus gamma. Can everyone see? Yeah. Uh, this is this is a real analysis. So, so I don't know if any of you are math majors, but this is the kind of stuff you do in real analysis. Uh, I see confused faces. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Am I going too fast, or is it is it okay? Is it does it make sense? So this is how this this comes from. Where this comes from. Um, Left my oh yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, okay. I hope I hope it's it's all clear. Um so this is the idea of this counting again. So we we cover this up. Let me so so in general we at each step we discount by a factor gamma that is smaller than one at each time step. And and over time, these rewards become, you know, so so we prefer a reward today as opposed to a reward at the next step or tomorrow and so on. So um, yes, and and over time, this 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 idea actually uh, helps the algorithm converge by by discounting it because then we won't have infinite rewards. These these series will all become finite. Um, so this is uh, in our tree. This is basically the first step. We start from the star state. This is the Q state, which is a state and an action. We end up in a new state that's prime and it's double prime and so on. And, and each of these steps, this, this is one step. And basically we, we have a discount of one here, then we discount by gamma, by the discount by gamma squared and so on. So this is the idea. We keep on discounting every step. Okay, so um, I'll skip this recap because I, I think it's quite clear. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about um, 
values. So, so now the next step is how do we find uh, the policy? How do we find the, the you know how which path the robot should follow? Right, this this policy. So, so we can do that by finding the values of the states. Basically, these uh, these are for each state. Eh, we can uh, come up with these ideas of values, which are basically the expected future rewards from starting from that state. It's how valuable it is that you are in that state. Yeah. Um, and then for the same, similarly for the Q state, for a state in action, well, again, the value of a Q state would be the expected utility, uh, the starting state S and taking action A now. And thereafter acting optimally. So then, and then we follow an optimal path. So this will be this is the value of a Q state, and the optimal policy will be again we will we'll call it pi of s, and that will be the optimal action from state s that we can take. Notice how we again we 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 use the star here in v star, q star, and pi star to define the optimal. These are optimal quantities. We we try to find them. Um, yeah, um, this is this is how. If you confuse what I mean by values and policy, this is what they look like. So, so this is the, an example of values for for these states. So, um, so basically, for each square, we have a certain number that tells us what is the expected future reward we'll get from that state. So, basically, a, a higher number means better here. So, so for example, this state uh, here, it's very it has a very low value. Which means it's undesirable to be in that state because you have to take you have a long way to follow, for example, like this, to to actually reach the goal state. Whereas here, it's it's much more valuable to be in this state because you're very close to the to the to the goal here to a plus one. So that's why this has a high value of zero ninety one. And on the right side, you have the policy again. You have the optimal actions you can follow. To, uh, for, at each state, you have the optimal action you can take to, reach, to take it to the goal state. This is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find these quantities, the values uh, and, the, and the policy of the states. Yeah? Okay, so, so this brings us to the, the meat of the, of the lecture, which are the Bellman equations. And this is an important uh, concept. So this, uh, the, the Bellman equations allow us to find the optimal values and the policies that we, we showed earlier. And, um, uh, and basically we, we formally so define the, value, the optimal values at state S as the maximum over all the actions we can take at a state over the Q values, optimal Q values, yeah? Um, then we define the optimal Q values at state S given action A as 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 the as the, as, the, as a sum over all the possible state s prime that you can land in of um, of this reward function the reward that you get in a state s prime plus the discounted discounted value of that state of that new state s prime and then we sum we sum and we weight these by the probability, by the transition probabilities. So how about the probability of actually ending in state of prime? That's how we define the Q, the, the optimal Q value. And, and finally, if we combine these together, so if we um, take this, uh, yeah, we'll take this definition of Q star and plug it in here, basically in this uh, one above, then we get the, uh, the iterative Bellman equation, which basically says that the value V star of S is equal to maximum over all the actions, again, over the total, over, over all the, over the sum of all the states you can end in of, of this formula that, that we had earlier. So, so now um, we have, look at the very last equation now. What we have is that the, we have the, these values, optimal values of the states, which are, which appear both there and also here at the very end. So it's a recursive equation where the values uh, again from state S um, appear again here, but for a different state S prime. 
but it's the same values. And he has, he has some rewards uh, that, that you that you find those states. So in general, when you see this in an algorithm, um, when you see the the same kind of quantity appearing on both sides of the of the quality, it means you can do an iterative procedure. You can keep on iterating these values until they converge. So you start with some initial uh, values, and then you do one one iteration of this equation, then you do a second iteration, and so on. And this, this is what we're going to call value iteration. I'll stop here for a sec uh, if we want to have any questions. Any questions? Yes. Gamma, yes. So gamma is uh, uh, below uh, less than uh, one. So it would keep decreasing the. Any other questions? Okay, uh, how about how about this? How about we take a four minute break? Um, and then we're gonna continue in the second half and then we can also gonna do a quiz and uh, a class exercise, sorry, in the second half. Okay. Um,
Okay, how about we do a quiz? What do you think? So, um, so if you open, use your mobile phones and go to jmacquiz.com, um, and you can enter this code. Okay, 32. Can you, can you all join now? If you haven't, we'll wait 10 more seconds. Okay, everyone connected? Okay, let, let's start. Okay, three, two, one. What does the Markov property say and why is it useful? We have it here. So. Three seconds left. Four seconds. Okay, let's see the responses. So the present and future and past events are independent. Uh, yeah, 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 uh, almost. Um, the past and future are independent of the present. Yes, yes, this is, this is better, this is better. Only the present is relevant. It is useful because less computation is needed to find the next state, for example. Something about Markov chains. <laughs> Past doesn't matter, only the present. Uh, useful, so we only need to look at one state and not the history, yes. Says that each state is independent from its past and future. Useful when calculating optimal decisions because you only have to consider present state. Yeah. It is useful because you can skip unnecessary expansion of nodes. Uh, yeah, yeah, when you have a computational graph, yes, you, you don't have to look in the past, yes. Um, the Markov property says the past, present, and future are independent, which means that we only have to consider the likelihood of a given event happening now instead of calculating how the past affects it. Yes, yes, this is correct. The outcome probability only dependent on current state, not the past states. Yes, correct. Does it make sense what the Markov property is telling us? Yeah. Good. Um, okay, next question. Ready? 
Three, two, one. Can you see the the drawing, the figure? Because it doesn't show on my laptop. Yeah, but no. So starting in state D, what is the optimal policy? Draw the arrows in the box. 27 seconds left. Thirteen seconds. Seven seconds. Come on, everyone. Only sixteen answers, I guess. So far. What happened? I only got nineteen out of forty-two. Okay, let's see. So, uh huh, uh huh. So th these are good, these are good. What is this, what does this mean? <laughs> what does that mean, huh? I see a happy yeah. face there. Tag. No, what is that, no? What, what is it? What is that? <laughs> so there was a lot of uncertainty there. But uh, but that's correct. That that is that is correct. So in general, so for this, uh, yes, because you would go left from each of these states. You would go left because it's a higher reward than this one. That's why the, the optimal policy is to keep going left towards the bigger the bigger price. Okay, next question. Ready? Three, two. <laughs> Even at the discount factor G is 0 0.1, what is the optimal policy now? Forty seconds left. So G discount factor G is the gamma we were discussing earlier. We heard discount factor. Um, it's, it's this gamma we were talking about here in all these examples. Fourteen seconds. Okay. Try all of you to move to something in. Five, four, three, two. Okay. Let's see the answers. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you can go down. It's not, you know, it's not, a, it's only left or right. <laughs> um, another smiley face. So, so what do we have here? Let's see. What do the blue arrows mean there? And this one. Blue arrows? Yeah, um, I see something missing here. I see we have no, for this one, we have no decision on state D. We, for this one, we have no decision in state B and C. So in general, policy has to give us some some action to do in all the states. We, you can't leave some states blank. You have to, to say what is, the, what is the optimal action to do in those states. Um, sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, so which one is it? Is it like this? Is it also like left, 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 like this one? Or is it like 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 this one, for example? Right and then left, left. Which one do you think? Between right, left, left. Who thinks this is left, left, left? Someone, some, some. Uh, so why, why right, left, left? 
Quite right. So basically, so you have like a yeah, I don't know. So basically, you can have stay in the like stay in the from like two shallow away. So basically, you don't have to do it from the power three. So the power three, so the power three. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. By the time you get here to the goal state, you'll have a gamma to the power of three, which is 0 0.1 to the power of three, which is 0 0.001. So it loses too much by then. Yeah. Um, so that's why that's why from state D is better to go and take the the reward, the smaller reward right away. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's basically just a, a fact, you know, when we we get um so we were saying how we get rewards, right? So so we get like reward uh, zero, reward one, reward two, at each step. This is a reward we get right now, this is a reward we get a step. Next step, step one, and then step two, and so on. So so the, uh, if we are to not have a discount factor, we simply add them up like this. We say we add accumulated rewards over time. Can you see the, the board from over there? Yeah. So if we have a discount factor now, we simply discount each of these steps. So, so the, the one at step one we discount by gamma, then this one we discounted by gamma squared, and this one we discount by gamma to the power of three, and so on. So at each step, we keep discounting by uh, by factor of gamma, which keeps amplifying. So gamma, gamma squared, gamma cubed, and so on. Uh, it's a geometric discounting, it's called. Because, because this will be the, the, this whole sum, like this over that, will be less than infinite. It will be finite if you do that. It won't be infinite. So, so think of it like this. Imagine if these rewards are just one, all of them one, right? Yeah, so you, you keep adding one plus one plus at each step, you get a reward of one, right? In the limit, you get an infinite, an infinity, right? When, you, when the limit, when this tends to infinity, like the limit, when n tends to infinity of adding up with these ones will be infinite. So you get an infinite uh, reward, right? Okay. If you do, if you discount, now if you add the gammas, one plus gamma times one plus gamma squared times one plus gamma to the power three times one and so on, this will now be finite because it'll be equal to this. We just showed it. It, 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 it does this much. Yeah, I see that. Right? Okay. I think I should ask him yeah, 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 yeah. I, I come in the office hours to ask. Yeah, yeah. I have a question. There. When do we move the arrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the the like this will all like if you have this small factor, so they will for the most it will be small, small from the like closest. Yeah, the, when you have discount factor, so remember in the tree of uh, in our search tree, like um, like what is happening? We have a search tree. Remember, so we you know we have these kind of this kind of tree like this. So so for example, uh, this this reward, which is one two three steps away will be much more discounted than this reward, which will be one step away. So then if, depending on those, uh, the values of the rewards, because it, it also matters how was the value, then, then you would, maybe the optimal path to go like this, or otherwise to go like this, this, and that kind of. So basically, de depending on how much this reward, this is the R times gamma, this will be, yeah, this is R1 times gamma, this will be R, Two times gamma to the power of three, for example, a different value, R, R prime, R prime, R prime. So if this can quantity is higher than this quantity, then this path is better to follow. So then your your action, your policy changes. You take this action for gamma at this stage. Yeah. Uh, 
another question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's why the next one to call the other people from the actual agent. Maybe it's always going to be coming in. Yeah. 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 Ye
Okay, so this is not good. This is not good. <laughs> I, was, I, was not, I was not going to I was expecting it to be flipped. Wow. <laughs> so, okay, so, so let's take it one by one. So, um, let me put up the text here. So, we have the text here. So, it says, Wally the robot is hungry. In a certain places in the maze where it's working, there are various amounts of food. All the electronics, his favorite dish. So, so what is one? What is one? Anyone? What 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 is it referred to? These these food items that one likes. These electronics. The reward. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me. So let's bring up the equation. Uh, over here. Yeah. How do we do this? Yeah, like this. Okay. Professor. Okay, so yeah. Sorry to interrupt, but your AirPod is not connected, so people can't hear, hear you on Zoom. Oh. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now on Zoom? Uh, I I mean we can hear you and when you are here, but if you go far, then we can't hear you. Can you go far and make, uh, I can check? One second. So I I, I changed to the AirPods. I should work now. It should work now. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let me see. Maybe maybe that's not in the. So it's connected. Um, can you hear me now on Zoom? Can you, yeah. Uh, well, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, it works. Thank you. Okay, it works great. Um, so, um, okay, so, so, um, so what do we have here? Let, let me go on this side. So, um, so what, what is one referring to? The the wall is food. It's favorite food. Like you know these electronics. So wh wh which one of these symbols? Which one of these concepts we refer is referring to that? Yeah. What? What? I heard something. Reward. Yes. Yeah. So these are the rewards basically. The food is the reward that it gets, and and this is the reward here. This R. S pi S prime. I know. I know. It it has all these arguments. It just means it depends on all those states. It depends on the current state and the policy and on the on the action that you take and on the new state that you land in. But that's that's the food. That's 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 it. What about number two? However, Wally's electronics are faulty. So every time it moves forward, it only works with probability zero point eight. T. Yes, the transition. That's the transition probability. That's the that's the function. This function T that is telling us. If you are state S and take this action, pi of S, it is a given by a policy. This is an action given by a policy, and you end up in state, then you end up in state S prime. So it tells us the transition probability. This is what it's referring to. Three, certain places in the maze are closer to the food items. What does that refer to? Yeah. V or gamma? V, yeah, that's the value of function. Yes, that's the value of the states. It's how valuable the state is to be in that state because that's uh, that place is closer to the food items. That's the value. This is this V here, V of V pi of S. That's what it is. I hear some O's, so I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy. So it's making more more sense. Pi is the policy. Pi is the policy. No, it's not the exponent. It's the policy. It's basically the value in that uh, of this state under the policy under the policy pi i know we'll, 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 it will become more clear it'll become more clear but this is basically yeah yeah this is this is an action that is given by policy and this is the value under the policy the values uh, under the policy yeah yeah it's basically you know the policy tells us the action that we're taking then the, the value is sort of saying like, you know, under that policy, under all those actions, 
this is the value of the thing. Because basically what you, what you do is you follow the policy, you go here, then there, then there, according to the policy. And then you compound, you sum up all the rewards you get along the way. And that's the value, the, some of the expected rewards in the future, all the dis discounted by Yammer. So that's, that's why you, the policy dictates of the actions, move here, there, and so on, the path, and then we sum up and discount. And that's, that's, the, that's the, all of this summed up will give, give us the value V. Number one is it's referring to food items or this ultra, which is basically the reward R. So that's the reward uh, function in, a, in, in MDPs that you get, the food items, yes. This is, at each state, this is saying the reward that you get from starting state S, taking action, pi of S, and then and landing in state S prime. Yeah. All clear? One more thing, so we have number five. No, sorry. Number four, the food uh, Wally ate yesterday gets digested at, at, used at a rate of 0 0.7. What is that? Gamma. That's the discount factor, gamma. We keep losing, if, if he, yes. Um, yes, we, we, yeah, uh, that's, that's the discount factor, gamma. Um, it's the rate at which we lose the rewards, sort of like if, if, we, if we don't take them now. Wally knows the path to get to a food place. Five, this is five. What, so what is five? The, the way knows the path to get to a food place. Pi, yeah, it's pi, it's the policy. The path that, that it follows is the policy that it follows. So this, this pi will be, will be, it's a set of actions that we take from each state. So it will give us a path. Yeah. Okay. Uh, We have five more minutes, 10 more minutes, it takes 41. We have 10 more minutes, let, let, let's start the next, next lecture uh, and then we continue next time. But we still have 10 more minutes, let, let's use that. Um, um, was it helpful, this quiz? Did you like it? Yeah, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll try to do some more next time in the next lectures. So um, let me... Let's continue briefly because um, for 10 more minutes, I still want to use them. Um, so don't pack up your bags yet. I wanted to start discussing about some more interesting topics. So in, in MDPs. So, so remember, look at all these things again. This is, these are the values. This, this is the value V that we were there you saw earlier. This, these are, this is the policy, the set of actions. So to have some more, again, some more grounding. Values and policy. Um, we saw these equations. So again, how we can iterate, this is, uh, this is uh, give us the value iteration, basically. We start from these Vs, we, uh, and, and we get this, uh, this update of, of doing Vs. So, um, so th this is what I want to talk about, the value iteration and later on policy iteration. But let's start uh, again introducing this idea of value iteration. How do we iterate these values to, to find them out? So, um, um, so we have, we want to find the optimum policy pi. And we can of course do something called expecting max search. We start from, which is basically telling us that in our tree, we start from state S, then we take an action, well, this is a Q state, and then we end up in state S prime. And we simply, what we do is that we take the maximum over all these actions that, uh, that, that is possible over all these Q state, and that, that gives us the value. So that's, uh, that's called expecting max search. Uh, and we can modify it to basically take the, uh, to the this arg max over all these queues. Uh, and that gives us the optimal policy. Um, and then we get again an optimal, optimal Q star. You've seen this before. And then we get the optimal V, uh, the value, optimal value, which is the maximum over all these Q states. Um, so, um, so what is the problem of doing this is, is like uh, expecting max, basically doing um, kind of like minimax. Imagine how minimax used to run, basically we're going down in the tree. Well, what's the problem with doing that? Basically like you know, kind of going down these uh, tree branches. Why, why do you think it might, what, what problems could we encounter? Any ideas? Yeah. Say again. 
an infinite search, yes. Yes, infinite search, we can get stuck. The, the breadth of the tree can be very big. Um, there's a lot of problems. Sometimes, we, what about repeated states? We have all these things, all these, all these problems with repeated states, and sometimes we, so we lose a lot of computation with that. So, um, so we get all these problems, like um, we would only search once per state. We don't have to search twice per state because then we, we can, we, we waste the computation. Um, so the idea here that comes is basically to do value iteration, what we call value iteration, which is basically we compute the optimal values for all the states at once. We don't, we don't, it's, it's like, we don't go down the, the tree, like one and one on one branch. We actually do, do, do the update all the, all the, all the states at once, all the values. And this will be like a bottom up dynamic programming function. It's kind of like we start on the bottom of the tree and we kind of go, go up. It's kind of like that. So, um, and let, let's see how, how that works. So we, um, we compute the estimates VK of S, basically VK is basically the values in state S. If we do, if we look K steps ahead in the future, like K, K steps. Um, and, and as K, of course, this is not optimal, uh, but as K approaches infinity, it will be the optimal values, right? So, uh, so, um, so, so how we do again, we basically take all the values in, in our, of, across all the states and we update them with this equation basically. For all the values on our, on our board, remember we had on that grid, we update them with this equation and we throw them out the new values. So this will be the old values. And then we, after doing all of this, this will be the new, new assignment to the new values, all these sums. And this is called, uh, this is called the value update or also a Bellman update. And it's, it's a very important concept. This is how AlphaGo, for example, you know, what AlphaGo used to be like, you know, the, uh, the, the Go champion and so on, all, all these kinds of like, you know, uh, problems, all these robots uh, um, use, use the Bellman and Bellman updates and Bellman equations and, and reinforcement learning. So it's, it's a very important concept. Um, and again, we repeat this until convergence. Um, let me show you briefly how it, how it works. So, so here's, for example, our, our grid, right? These are the values that we start with initially. So initially these are values are all zero across all the states. Um, and and uh, with, the, with the only exception of being these goal states. Um, and, and we do one update and you see this, this value, this square gets, in the, gets a value of 0 72 because when we run this equation, um, is simply the, the value of this state is the one. And then we, the, the, this value now at, at three, three basically becomes the, pro, the sum over all the states that it can land in of starting at three, three, going right, for example, following the going right this way, and then using the discounted value. And then the reward you accumulate by doing that and the discounted value. So, so in this case, you get uh, 0 0.9, which is, uh, the discount factor times uh, here. So this, with 0 0.8 probability, we actually end up going right and we get the one. And with 0 0.1 probabilities, we go to the sides and we call it to zero. So that's how we end up with 0 0.72 in that square. And we keep doing this repeatedly many times until convergence. So look here, so look, we have zero point after one iteration. So we start with everything zero. After one iteration, we get 0 0.72. And then these ones also update, are updating 0, 52, 0, 43. And then these ones start becoming non-zero and so on. And, and now we see all, all of them are non-zero by now, but they're still changing, they're still updating. Even though they're non-zero, they still keep accumulating more and more. Um, after seven, after eight iterations, they see they keep changing and keep changing and so on. The 10 iterations after 11. And eventually they converge to this after a hundred iterations. So these will be the value. These are the values uh, that have converged. So you see the, 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 the closer you are to the goal state, the better, the, the higher the value is of that state. Um, does this make sense? Any questions? Okay, so let, let's stop here in that case and we'll continue next time. Okay.
question. So you said that we have only only up to two days, late days for the project, right? The syllabus is at four. And is there syllabus at four? Yeah. And is there a chance for this one we can make it three? I can open the syllabus. Uh, if, if, if it was four, sorry, yes, yes, yes. I, I will always stick to that. Yes. Three days are exhausted because we are under no circumstances more than four days after it's due date. Yeah, sorry. I, I think it was, yeah, I'll, I'll use that in that case. I'll use four. Yeah. For, this so, for all, because of the syllabus. Yeah, sorry. My TA told me two days. Oh, uh, right. But I, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's four now. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so, especially since you said that. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll use that. Yeah. yeah. Let me let me start it about the whiteboard. So is it is it usual like is it staying with the submitted automator or is it going to set the other side for the whiteboard? Um, uh, follow the instructions on the yeah. Well, what did they say? What did they say on the instructions on? It doesn't say about about the late. About late. Uh, yeah, late. Uh, is it is the same portal uh, as before? No, as as, a, as a not submitting late. Uh, so we submit the report in the same 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 or get in touch with my teams because they they they're not better on that. Like I I don't I don't know, and I, I think it's the same place, but I don't. Yeah, I don't know, and then, yeah, check with them. I don't know. I don't know. Four day, two days. Four day or two days? So yes, um, it was confusion. Sorry about that. I, the syllabus said four days. Um, I, I, I know it was a confusion. So I, I'll use that in that case. I'll use that and, and I'll, I'll make an announcement on uh, on Canvas to clarify that actually four days. Yeah, sorry about that. It was a big communication. Yeah. I was just a little confused about the wording. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh huh. So when it starts. Yeah. Uh, grade three, three, in the next. This one. It goes to. Seven to three. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. taking into account all the squares that it could go to. It right? could go to yes. So that's why it updates further to eight because as you know the zero to the left and below it update, it sort of updates. Exactly. Itself. Exactly. Well, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Because the potential uh, right now uh, is even if you end up going down by mistake and come back up and then go to a go state, that's why. So okay. this doesn't have actually a value of zero. It actually has, yeah. I'm kind of confused with like the arrows. The arrows? The, so they're like the, the arrows. Ah, I, I forgot to mention these arrows show the optimal policy. Okay. So that's, yeah. It yeah. And the, the optimal uh, direction. I know. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that could still go like, like right? But. The optimal way that you need to go back. Yes, 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 yes. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 you're welcome. Yeah. Yeah, do, do you ask the student to get extra time? Uh, it's, it's actually going to be quite easy. We'll, we'll stay in the, in the okay, class because yeah. there's, no, there's no course afterwards. Yeah, we're just going to stay extra. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, the the noise is basically that noise in the actions that they can take. You know, because even if you, you go north, you actually end up oh, so like, with no, like the, only the with the eighty percent probability. So twenty oh, percent probability, you, you go either left or right. Ten percent left, ten percent right. Oh yeah. Um, Yeah, living reward is, is your basically you, you, forget about this. There's nothing. Yeah, uh, the discount 0 0.9 means uh, yeah, no, discount yeah. reward. Yeah, okay, yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I was hoping if you could, like, help me through. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, alpha beta pruning. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, so like in my head, right? So we go here and it starts out at like negative infinity, positive infinity. Mm -hmm. Push that down, push that down till we get to the first node, the mm -hmm. first tree. Mm -hmm. We open up nine, negative two, seven. We see that negative two is the minimum. Mm -hmm. So we push, push negative two up to the beta. Right? Yeah. So negative yeah. Negative negative. yeah. And then we push that back up to this tree. Um, 
So now it's it's negative two. Um, <laughs> like like that. And then so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. exactly, exactly. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Five. Yeah. That's yeah. more than that, right? So we don't need to look at these over here. Yeah. Yeah. Twelve. Okay, like negative three. Okay, plus and that, so we're gonna open this one. Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, exactly. Just, okay, so now we have negative two and eight, right? Um, we push this up to the minimum thing. Uh huh. So now negative two is the minimum. Uh huh. Here and then negative infinity here. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's correct. When you have infinity or negative infinity, it, it, it's not helpful. It's not telling you anything. Okay. It's kind of like, uh, it's like if, you, if you still have infinities, like yeah. an infinity or negative infinity, it's it's not going to prune anything. It okay, has to yeah. be like, because it has to be the like, if, if instead of infinity, you had the value of minus 10, for example, yeah, like an, actual then, an actual value, then everything that would be below minus 10 would okay. be pruned. But if, yeah. you know, it's not, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, so, so that's cool. And then, mm -hmm. so, you push this down to here. Mm -hmm. so, exactly, exactly. So, you, keep, uh, you always go to leftmost, the leftmost ones, and then you go one by one, and you compare with the alpha and the beta, depending on if you are in a man mix or min or max. So, yeah. we save the negative to compare with the positive. Yeah. So, so, we're comparing negative. Like, when we open up the high, right? Do we need to look at six? They kind of flip for one second. So this becomes a negative two. It becomes uh, this alpha becomes the minus negative two, right? And then um, you, yeah, you 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 basically expand one of them, like for example three, and if that one is. Um, Like 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 lower than the alpha, then basically um, you don't expand the rest. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I think it's quite hard to explain because it, it, these alphas and betas which switch, uh, yeah, so you can kind of yeah, become confusing. Yeah. Negative to infinity, right? So here we're yeah, comparing yeah. Um, whatever minimum to negative two, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, so we would look at. We would wouldn't look at that one, right? Because we would open up negative five, and then that's less than negative two, and so so we cross that out. And the same process. So one becomes the minimum here, and so mm -hmm. you still need to look at everything here, right? Yeah. Like yeah. Negative eleven. That's less than everything, so we just cross that one. Out. Yes. I yes, did yes. that, and then it was next to that. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, this is on the worksheet, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, um. You might be yeah, probably mean, yeah, yeah, there was a mistake somewhere. Um, ask, um, I'll have to go through them, like, kind of like, and kind of like to be able to help you, like, kind of, there's a mistake somewhere, probably. Oh, okay, you okay. Made, uh, this is for the second one, not the Then, the one that's uh, 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 the one that's uh